Now we are going to review pediatric post-resuscitation care, which is meant to optimize ventilation and circulation, and preserve organ and tissue function. If a patient has a return of spontaneous circulation, start post-resuscitation care immediately. The first system we will be covering is the respiratory system. Check atrial blood gas and correct possible acid-base disturbances. Continuously monitor pulse oximetry as well as heart rate and rhythm. For non-intubated patients, watch for signs of deterioration that may indicate intubation is necessary, or for signs that intubation is required to protect the airway. Monitor end tidal CO2 if the victim is intubated to assure adequate oxygenation and ventilation. Pain should be controlled with analgesics and anxiety with sedatives as necessary. Now let's move on to cardiovascular post-resuscitation care. Monitor heart rate and rhythm, blood pressure, urine output, and central venous pressure if available. Lab monitoring should include ABGs, electrolytes, calcium, and glucose. Based on those results, transfuse or correct chemistries as needed. Perform a chest x-ray and 12 lead ECG. Consider echocardiography. Maintain appropriate intravascular volume. Treat hypertension with vasopressors. Monitor pulse oximetry. Maintain adequate oxygenation. And correct metabolic abnormalities. As always, control pain and sedate is appropriate. Next, let's review post-resuscitation care for the neurological system. When monitoring temperature, avoid hypothermia and treat an elevated temperature. For cardiac arrest, consider hypothermia protocol. If hypothermia protocol is initiated, avoid rewarming unless hypothermia is causing complications. Monitor routine labs, including blood glucose, and treat abnormalities. Monitor blood pressure and maintain cardiac output and cerebral perfusion. Check respiratory status, perform frequent neurological exams, observe closely for seizures, and consider CT or EEG. Watch for signs of cerebral herniation, which include dilated pupils, hypertension, bradycardia, or respiratory irregularities, including apnea. Now let's discuss post-resuscitation for the renal system. Monitor urine output. Low urine output could indicate pre-renal conditions such as low intravascular volume caused by fluid shift. Exceedingly high urine output could indicate neurological or renal damage. Monitor routine blood chemistries, ABG and acid-base disturbances, and urinalysis. Maintain cardiac output to promote renal perfusion. Don't forget to consider the effect of medications on renal tissue the impact of fluid resuscitation, and the effects of toxins. Here are the proper steps for post-resuscitation in the gastrointestinal system. Monitor NGOG2 for patency and residuals and perform a thorough abdominal exam. Consider an abdominal ultrasound and or an abdominal CT. Monitor routine blood chemistries, ABG, acid-base disturbances, and check often for bleeding in the bowel. The last system of post-resuscitation care is the hematological system. Monitor complete blood count and coagulation panel. Transfuse as needed to correct thrombocytopenia or replenish clotting factors, such as with fresh frozen plasma. Use calcium chloride or gluconate if massive transfusion is needed. Lastly, monitor for and correct any metabolic abnormalities that may arise post-transfusion. Here's the pediatric post-resuscitation care algorithm. Please take this time to study the algorithm in your provided manual. This concludes your PALS course. Thank you for taking PALS with us at NHCPS, and good luck on your certification exam.